Hey everybody, today we are looking at chapter 5, section 2, which is bisectors of triangles. Um, starting off with some pretty important vocabulary here. Uh, when we have multiple lines intersecting at one point, so it's three lines or more, anytime they intersect at one point, it is called, um, that those lines are called concurrent. Okay, so I can draw a line here and here and here. All of these lines, oh, that one got a little bit off, but all of these lines are concurrent and they intersect right here. Where they intersect is called your point of concurrency. All right, so what we're looking at here is in um, a triangle. If I draw all of the perpendicular bisectors, Okay, so the red lines here are all the perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC. We've got three sides, so we have three bisectors for each, or one bisector for each side, so three total bisectors. Um, so those bisectors, these red lines, are going to be concurrent at point P. Point P is called the circumcenter of the triangle. All right, so your perpendicular bisectors will meet at the circumcenter. Now, what our theorem is, is that the distance from the circumcenter to each vertex, which is these blue lines, those are all going to be congruent, okay? So your red lines are your perpendicular bisectors, your blue lines are the distance to each angle, and those will be the same. When we are um, drawing our circumcenter and drawing our perpendicular bisectors. When I look here, if I have an acute triangle, my circumcenter is going to end up being inside the triangle. Okay, so for all acute triangles, your perpendicular bisector will meet inside it. Okay. For your obtuse triangles, your perpendicular bisectors will always meet outside the triangle. All right, so your circumcenter in an obtuse triangle is located outside the triangle. When we have a right triangle, where our perpendicular bisectors meet is on the triangle, and it's on the midpoint of the hypotenuse every single time. All right, so our circumcenter can be located inside, outside, or on the triangle, depending on the type of triangle that we are given. All right, um, our circumcenter, the where the name circumcenter comes from is it is the center of the circle that is circumscribed around the triangle. What that means is when you draw a triangle, and you create a circle around it so that each vertex of the triangle is on the circle, just like you see here in this picture. It is said that this triangle or this circle is circumscribed about triangle ABC. And the center of that circle is your circumcenter. So your circumcenter is the center of circumscribed circles. <laughs> so it's kind of a lot, but it's all the words sound very similar. Um, so that's why it is the circumcenter. So let's take a look here for example one. So if you have questions on any of that, go ahead and write those down now as we kind of move on here to this example one. So we have that KZ, Z, or LZ, and MZ are all perpendicular bisectors. So even though it's not marked on here, I know that this is right, and I know that these are congruent. I know that this is right, and these are congruent. I know that this is right and these are congruent, okay? Um, and I want to find HZ. So if I look, HZ is right here, all right? So this piece right here is the one that I'm looking for, okay? So HZ is the distance from the circumcenter to an angle, all right? I'm going to erase these little extra marks. Didn't mean to do that. Mm, right there. Okay. Um, so I know that from the circumcenter to each vertex of my triangle is going to be congruent. 
So all three of these are going to be the same length. So that means that HZ is going to be the same length as GZ, which is 19.9. Okay, so what I want you to do is go ahead and take a minute and try these three using this picture. So go ahead and pause your video right now. All right, so go ahead and check each of these. I know that GM is 14.5 because, again, I know that MZ is a perpendicular bisector, so this is, um, both of these are congruent. I know GK is 18.6 because for the same reason right here, that these two sides are congruent here and here because again I know that KZ is a perpendicular bisector and then I look at JZ here which is going to be the distance from that circumcenter to the vertex of the triangle so all three of these are congruent so it is also 19.9 uh, questions on that go ahead and write it down now all right so the next thing that we're going to do is when we're given coordinates of the vertices we are going to find the circumcenter on a graph. So we are going to start by plotting our points. Um, so R is negative six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, zero. So here's R at negative six, zero. Okay, then S is at zero, one, two, three, four. So S is here at zero, four. And O is at zero, zero. So here's O at zero, zero. All right, and we are going to go ahead and draw in that triangle. Okay, now, if I am finding the circumcenter, okay, that means that I am looking for two things, okay? I'm looking for the perpendicular, well, I'm looking for the perpendicular bisectors, which means I'm looking for two things, okay? I want the bisector, which means that I'm looking for the midpoint, and the perpendicular, which means that their slopes are going to be opposite reciprocals, okay? Now, a lot of the times you will see your triangles looking like this where it's kind of nice and easy. Um, so what I want to do here is for each side, I want to find the midpoint. So one, two, three, four. This side has a length of four. So I know this is the midpoint. This side has a length of six. So right here is a midpoint. Now, because I know that the um, circumcenter is going to be where all three perpendicular bisectors meet, I really only need to draw two of them. So now I know where the point is that bisects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the perpendicular through this line. Well, since I have a vertical line, a horizontal line is going to be perpendicular to that. Okay, here I have a horizontal, so a vertical line is going to be perpendicular. And I missed, so hold on, let me just yeah, undo that. Okay, so now the question is, is where do those meet? They meet right here, which is at the point negative 3, 2. Okay, now this is also the midpoint of the hypotenuse because I have a right triangle, which is on slide 1, where we said that our circumcenter will be located anytime I have a right triangle. All right, um, so questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is the in center of a triangle. The in center is where angle bisectors meet, okay? So when I look at this picture, the red lines are my angle bisectors. You can tell because each here in each corner, I'm showing that I have two congruent angles here, 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 and here, and here, okay? So that means that point P here is my in center. From my in center, it is equidistant from all three sides of the triangle. So remember that when we go from a point to a side, just like we said with 5, 1, that we have to draw that perpendicular. So we have to make sure that if I'm drawing the distance from P to this side, I have to draw it perpendicular to the side. So these three perpendiculars are going to be congruent. Okay, now with my in center, 
my try or my um ugh, my angle bisectors no matter what are always going to intersect inside the triangle so your in center will always be located inside so your circumcenter can be located inside outside or on but your angle bisectors and your in center will always be inside the triangle okay um, just like the circumcenter is the center of the circumscribed circle if I draw a circle so that each side of the circle touches the um, triangle, okay, that is called your inscribed circle, okay? P is your in center, and it's the distance for our, and it's the um, center of your inscribed circle. Sorry, guys, I'm having problems talking today. What I want you guys to see is, look, if I go from here, perpendicular, here, here, all of these are radii. So, like, if I were to draw that same circle in here, pretending that it looks like a nice circle, <coughs> all of these are radii. And so they're all going to be equal, okay? That's what these theorems are kind of based off of, is looking at those circles, um, it's not something that I'm going to really ask you to memorize, but it's just kind of helping your understanding. All right. Um, so let's take a look at example three here. I want to know the distance from V to KL if I know that these are angle bisectors. So I'm told that JV, which is here, is an angle bisector. And I'm told that KV is an angle bisector, okay? I only have two of them drawn. I don't have the third one drawn, but that's okay. I don't really need the third one drawn because I know where it's going to be because those other two are going to intersect in the same spot. So since V is my in center because it's where my angle bisectors meet, I know that the distance from V to each side of the triangle is going to be exactly the same. So WV, this distance, and this distance will all be 7.3 because they have to be congruent, okay? So the next thing that I wanna look at is the measure of angle VKL, all right? Which is this angle right here, okay? Now, I know that, and I'm going to kind of erase this here, that this angle here is 106. I know that this one is 19. Well, because this is a bisector, I know that this angle here is also 19 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two angles here because this whole angle is now going to be 38 degrees because 19 plus 19. All right, and I'm going to subtract these two from 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus, actually, and I can write that over here, 180 minus 106 minus 38 is going to give us the measure of angle JKL. Okay, so it's going to give us this whole angle here. So when I do that, minus 106 minus 38. I'm going to get 36 degrees is going to be the measure of angle JKL. Okay, so now I, why did I write a three? JKL. So now I know that this whole angle here is 36 degrees. So I know again that this is a bisector. So all I have to do to get this one is cut that in half. So the measure of angle VKL is going to be 36 divided by 2 which is gonna give us 18 degrees. Okay, and again, we will go over this a little more in class. Um, so make sure that if you do have questions that you go ahead and write them down. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you later.